if you're one of those guys who want to catch a fish on a jig or have completely given up on jig fishing because it's so difficult, this video is for you. What's going on guys, this, this is Gene Jensen. This video is all about the basics of jig fishing. I'm not gonna dive into all the little advanced features and things like that you can do with a jig. I'm gonna talk about the basics because I want you to catch your first fish on a jig. It ain't easy. Um, and 99% of it is in your head. Once you get confidence in one of these things, you will drag it all day till you catch a giant. That's one thing about jigs is they catch the big fish in the school nobody knows why but you can always catch bigger fish on a jig so let's dive into the basics how i set up a jig how i set up my rod my reel and then how to fish the thing and we'll get this thing knocked out all right so the types of jigs i literally just buy two types i buy a type that has a football head this one's for dragging and i buy a type that is well like the one on here this is the strike king um uh, structure bug it's good for dragging and it's because it's got a pointy head and the and the eye is shape is is kind of tucked into the head like that it comes through cover really really well so that's a good altar all all around one so those are basically the two types that i buy and i've got as you can see a plethora of jigs um but basically two colors green pumpkin and black and blue or green pumpkin and brown and black and blue are the three colors that i do and i'll mix in some oranges and stuff in there but it's pretty basic we'll go out to the store buy yourself two jigs buy a green pumpkin and buy, buy black and blue then get you some trailers the trailers that i'm going to use if it's winter time or if the water temperature is pretty cold is like early early spring and stuff like that i grab a zoom chunk and this is a super chunk and notice it's got the the claws on it don't really have a whole lot to make it have a whole lot of action when it's swimming through the water and that's what i want when the fish are a little lethargic and when the, you know when it, the water's good and cold now as as the post spawn or as the uh as the water warms up into the 70s and 80s i want something that has a lot of action so there's two different trailers that I look for and trailers are so important because that's the target the bass are going to be going after when the when the jig is sitting on the bottom we'll talk about that here in just a minute a zoom speed craw is one that I use if I want a small profile if I just want a small little jig and uh and it's got enough kick in the in the claws the claws got a little hook and stuff like that in them got enough kick in the claws to really to really be good but when I want a big jig that catches big bass and that want that has a lot of action, I go with the rage craw, and I'll bite just a, just the head of that rage craw off. I'll bite it off and put that on a jig, and that's what I use most of the time in the summertime. Something that has a lot of action. Um, other other trailers like the the 13 Fishing Invader kind of runs in between that. You know, has a little bit more action than the than maybe the the. Uh, the speed crawl but not as much action as this all right so you get your first jig all right so this one's a brand new jig hasn't been trimmed up or anything else and you hear about us trimming them all the time the first thing i'm going to do is you've got the weed guard right here okay and you notice how that weed guard goes way 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 past the barb okay and i want just one of the the tips of the lowest weed guard to get to that barb so i'm going to take a pair of cutters these are some pit bull cutters. I love these things, but uh, not sponsored, just love them. And I'm gonna cut straight across. I'm not gonna cut up at an angle like it is right now. I'm gonna cut straight across. And I'm gonna start right there where that, let me see if I can get you to do that, see you that. You focused? Okay, and I'm gonna cut it right across here, just like this. And that's all it is, just like that. And so when it, when the fish bites, it collapses easy but you've got enough protection to keep it somewhat weedless. Now this one's a little bent like that, maybe the way I have it packaged or it got hot one day or whatever, I don't know. I'm gonna fan that skirt out just a little bit, not pulling too hard because I don't wanna pull the skirt or the, the weed guard out of the hole, but I want it to look something like that. Now let me give you the ins and outs of trimming the skirts. Now trimming the skirts is, uh, understand that the shorter the skirt, the faster that skirt's gonna flare out on the bottom. See, when it hits the bottom, the skirt is all, all contracted. And when it, when it lands on the bottom and stops, that skirt opens up. The longer the skirt, the slower it opens up. 
the shorter the skirt, it flares out faster. Now, you kind of want to think about the mood the fish are going to be in. Early, early in the year when the water temperature is below 50 degrees, they want it really, really slow. I'm different. A lot of people want a small compact jig. I don't. I want a big fat jig with a lot of living rubber hanging off the bottom because that living rubber will, that long living rubber, like a mop jig and stuff, will flare out real slow and it really does open up that bait and give it a, give that, uh, make that uh, trailer have a really, be a really big target, a really nice target. Now, um, so when I first get one in the summertime, say this one right here, it's got, I got some living rubber on it, which I love living rubber on my skirts. And then I've got some silicone. I'm going to take and I'm going to trim the silicone up to the hook. This is kind of tricky with this one. And if you don't have any living rubber, no big deal. Just trim the silicone like this. Okay. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to trim that silicone right up to the base of the hook. I should have put a trash can under this. This is going to suck. <laughs> so just like that. So I got the base of the hook right here is what I want. So when it lands, that sil silicone will flare out pretty quick. Now with a living rubber, I'm going to trim it. This one's already trimmed because I typically want it about this long in the winter time. So this one's already trimmed up quite a bit. And when it lands, it'll flare out. If I feel like I need to flare it out even faster, I'll trim it up all the way to as far as, far as the silicone. So that's the idea of trimming it. Let's talk about rods and reels. All right. So typically a jig that you buy is going to have a pretty beefy, thick wired hook. So you've got to have a strong enough rod and strong enough line to be able to get that hook to penetrate into the bass um, and but not flex out. And these don't flex very easy because they are thick. Now, uh, choosing a rod. Ow, crap, that hook is sharp. <laughs> so choosing a rod um, is, uh, is I, I, I go for two, two different types of rods, either a seven foot plus medium heavy or a seven foot foot plus heavy. This is a 7.4 heavy. It's This is my jig rod. Um, I have 20 pound test fluorocarbon on it, 17 at the minimum for me because when I set the hook, I crack it and I don't want anything to give way. So I'll break 15 pound test pretty easy on a hook set if I'm, if, if I'm not careful. Uh, reel, 8 1 to 1 gear ratio reel or 8, this is an 8, uh, this is an 8 3 to 1 I believe. Eight four to one. It doesn't matter. Just an eight speed reel. The reason is, is that you make a you make a cast out. You drag and and you want to get the bait back to you faster. You can reel it faster. Also, a lot a, not a lot of times, but sometimes a bass will pick up a jig and swim towards you. And when he does that, you've got to catch up to him in order to crack that hook. Um, so you really get. It's better to have a high speed reel than a slower speed reel. So twenty pound test floor car, medium heavy or heavy action rod, and an eight speed reel is what you're going to need for this. All right. So before you get out on the water, what I want you to do is I want you to go and tie your jig onto your rod. Go out to your yard, find some concrete, some asphalt, some gravel, something. Throw that bait out, cast it out onto that gravel, and I want you to do this. I want you to close your eyes, and I just want you to slowly slowly drag it. Okay. And I want you to remember that feeling. So I want you to notice my rod. It should do this. My rod is stopping about every four or five inches. It's just stopping and it feels like I'm catching on stuff, which I am. It's a hard, I've got a hard uh, point right here, a hard bottom. And that's kind of what you're looking for. You want that feel. If you cast out into the water and you start dragging and you don't feel anything, it just feels mushy. That's not where you want to be fishing a jig. All right, so how do you, all right, so how do you find that hard bottom? What I look for is I look for long, look for points to start with. Like this is a point of land that comes out and it sticks way out into the into the water. That point, because it drops off on both both sides, the current and the wind and everything will prevent silt from settling on that point over time, and you'll get hard spots on that point, drop offs. Um, steeper banks and stuff like that. Any place where silt can't settle is the kind of stuff you're looking for. So I'm going to cast it out. I'm going to let it sink to the bottom. This is a pretty shallow point. And seriously, all you got to do is just drag. Now this is one of those things that you really have to commit to. Take only your jigs and only your jig rods fishing for a few days and get to the point where you have a few spots like this 
that are nice and hard, feel really good, feel like that concrete or that asphalt that you drug the jig across, and you really want to work it hard. You're going to get some hung up. It is what it is. Go over top of them, pop it loose, break them off. It, uh, it happens. That's why I've got so many jigs. But you want to drag it. Now in the summertime, you want a little bit more action. You know, early, early spring, cold water, you're going to drag it really slow. Summertime, you're going to do a little bit of drag, a little bit of drag, and maybe a hop or a shake. I've got rattles on this thing. I forgot to mention rattles. You can put rattles on them if you, if you want to. It's better to have them than not to have them. But there are days where it really doesn't matter. Lots of days where it really doesn't matter. And I'm just going to drag and shake. A little bit of hop. Another thing that I do that I forgot to talk about was you can flip to cover. If you've got a brush pile, something like that. What I like to do is I'll, I'll cast into that cover. I'll let it settle down to the bottom. Once it hits the bottom, I count one, two, three, and then I just shake it. And what happens is a lot of times these jigs will fall down into that cover or along the edge of that cover. It'll get the attention of a bass. The bass will come and they'll nose down and look at it. And by the time he gets down to it, you're shaking it and he's like, and he wants to grab it. And so that's one of the, another thing you can do, especially in the summertime. So the basics of doing it is keep it in contact with the bottom. The reason for, for finding the hard bottom is as you're dragging it through silt, it will dig its way down into that silt and disappear. And the bass don't want to go down there and grab hold of it in that silt. Plus, most crawfish and bluegill stay along that hard stuff. They, they, they eat along the edges of that hard, that hard, uh, hard bottom. And so... That's the, that's the general purpose. So let me get out here. Let me get out on a spot that's got fish on it. And let me see if I can catch at least one fish. All right, another thing that, that I like to do is if I cast out, and I know there's a hard spot in the area, but I, I'll cast past that hard spot and I'm feeling myself drag through silt, you know, drag, drag through soft bottom. I'm gonna drag pretty fast. I'm gonna try to get it out of that silt as fast as I can. And as soon as I get to that hard spot, that's when I slow down, or when I get to a rock, I'll shake it and hop it. Just kind of slow down a bit and just get to that hard spot, and then you start working it real slow. But as you're working through silt, work it pretty quick. You're not gonna get bit anyway. Get it to the, get it to the sweet spot, get it to the juice. That's what I'm talking about, look at that. And this, my friends, is what a jig will get you. Look at that chunky fish. <laughs> Whoa, mean fish. I know, I'm having the hardest time with this. Come on, buddy. Sorry about that. Fish landing penalty. Look at that son of a gun. Well, guys, that's what a jig will get you. Like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel, let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water. Go ahead and catch some fish. And have a great day. We'll see you. <laughs>